For those who respect and honor the word of God, I would ask you to stand as I read this foundational scripture coming from Ephesians 2, starting at verse 8. As I read through verse 10, this is what it says. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Is it the gift of your mama, young person? Is it the gift of your father? Is it the gift of your dad who wasn't in your life? Is it the gift of what the teacher said about you? Is it a gift of what statistics say about you? Is it the gift of what culture says about you? It is the gift of who? Not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Not mediocre works, not average works, not low works, good works which God prepared past tense in advance for us to do. Future tense, advanced, past tense, prepared. Such a mystery found in your word. You may have your seats. The New Living Translation says this. God saved you by grace when you believed, past tense. Saved, past tense. Grace, current. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done, young people. So none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. The other translation says handiwork. This translation boggles my mind because it says masterpiece. He has created us new in Christ Jesus so we can do good things. He planned past tense for us long ago. Do, current, present, do. Do, present, prepared, Past. Someone give God a praise for the mysterious love of God. We're going to go somewhere. We're going to go somewhere. I just thank God for his mysterious love of God because I realized I used to do mysterious stuff when I was younger. And if his love was not mysterious enough or had a mystery in it to save Chandler Scotland Bailey before I knew God would call me to youth and call me to young leaders and call me to youth workers and call me to youth departments and parents ministries, I, I, it would make no sense. Listen, the school, I'm a quick testimony. The school I got expelled out of in high school calls me now to advocate for their youth. The administrator that expelled me is now the assistant principal who calls me to write articles to encourage youth. The love of God will have people who push you out, forget they did, and ask you back in. I just want to speak to someone who's feel like life has kicked you out of things right now. If you just stay in the sim simple factor that God's love is enough, God will do something. I, I, God will do something. I just wanted to share that story. God will do something. So this message is directed towards young people, but like I tell our church in Columbia, watch out young people because there's some older people here that will snatch the word if you don't listen. So I encourage young people right now to take notes. Yes, if your phone is a distraction, young people, try not to use your phone. Uh, if you can find a, something to write down, write down. But take notes, take notes, take notes. How many people got real Bibles or, or, or you screen spoiled? How many of y'all got real Bibles? It's okay. Screen spoiled worked. We're in 2019. It all works out. But if you got re real Bibles, check it. I want to talk to you from the subject G status. G status. And they got a G status, the God of my grace. I, I, I didn't know that I had G status. I didn't know that, that, that God can work something in when you couldn't work it out. I didn't know that God could work it out when you didn't work it in. I didn't know that God had a mysterious way of loving Chandler Bailey. I did not know that the 15-year-old that gets on your nerves will one day grow up and buy you a new house, mama, if you just hang on a little while. I, I, I did not know that God can do some things that can mess our mind and do exceedingly above what we can ask or think. Some of us are disappointed because we've been asking God. We've been thinking about things that we want God to do in our life, but we feel like he's been ignoring it. I challenge you today, what if God is ignoring what you're asking or thinking because he's going to do exceedingly above? What if? So what is grace? What is this G status? You know, history has said the Greek and the Hebrew and all these different words. I researched them. But what really blessed me is the simple fact on Youth Day, this is the enabling, the daily guidance, the forgiveness and perseverance, the pre preservation of God. One translation says this, it's deliverance from enemies, afflictions, or adversity. Okay, but one blessing definition that really blessed me is grace may be defined as the unmerited or undeserving favor of God. Check this out. To those who are under condemnation. That 
cliffhanger is what really blessed me. It's the unmerited, undeserved favor of God, not for the ones in here who are perfect. It's the unmerited, undeserved favor of God for those in here who feel like you don't deserve to be here. This is the loud saint who keeps making noise in your row because the truth is they know they should be dead. They know they should be beating themselves in the head somewhere and sometimes they're out of order when they say hallelujah because their life was chaotic until God's love hit their life. So we try our best to maintain protocol, but when we live such a ratchet life, we realize we serve a Jesus that died for our ratchet. I tell the young people all day, Jesus died for your ratchet. They're like, Pastor Chandler, what's that? Oh, that's the stuff you won't tell your mama, ever told your mama, will never tell your daddy, and your grandma only knows when she prays real hard to the Holy Ghost. It's the ratchet, it's the nasty. Did you really do that? God said, I died for the stuff you try to tuck The stuff you won't talk about. Come on, Pastor Keith. We serve a gritty God. He doesn't doesn't ask us to clean ourselves up before he pays the price for us. We might look clean at the end. It might look real good as we're on the stage operating in the grace. But if you knew what God had to do to get people where they should be, if you knew the whole story. If you knew the whole story, someone say the God of my grace. Look at someone to the left, right, say, I I did not ask for this G status. I didn't ask for it. So let's focus on the word condemnation. This is an unmerited award, unmerited insults, unmerit. Okay, what is condemnation? The expression of very strong disapproval, like when I got expelled in high school. The action of condemning someone to a punishment. This is sentencing. So this is current, what you're currently going through, like your credit, credit score is currently not good right now, or, or your wife is currently mad at you, or your children currently get on your nerves. This is not like they used to. This is not like they're about to. Condemnation is always that current place of pain, that current weighty thing in your life. Because, it, it, see, we can say it happened in the past, but if you're keeping it with you, your past is currently in your present. That is condemnation. And so this, un- this really blessed me so much. This unmerited, undeserved favor of God, young people, look at me right here on the side. Look at me. This is what it is. What it is is God saying, I currently love you even though you used to. It's, it's yes, your mama going to take your phone away. Yes, you're going to go through the consequences. But as you go through it, I'm going to walk you through these consequences. We're going to get some wisdom from this situation. We're going to get some strategy from this situation. And if you go through the right way, anybody who put their mouth on you as you go through whatever God has to do to work it in or work it out, God said, I will glorify you in front of them. I'm trying to stay in the notes, Jesus. So because of Jesus, you can be out of sin through the power of Jesus, but because of life, you can still be in condemnation because of the powers of life. Look to someone to the left right and say, life can hurt. Life can hurt. Life can can make you feel condemned, especially if you did something wrong, especially if you got caught for doing something wrong. So condemnation, the expression of very strong disapproval, this is not just the disregard. This is that those things in life or those situations in life, those scenarios in life, those people in life who, who, who they make it their job to get a PhD in what you used to do. Like you moved on with your life, you're trying your best young person, but there's people, and, and, and it's not that I don't like going over auntie's house, and it's not like I don't like, I, I love Thanksgiving, I just don't like the same conversation. Every time we get around the table, why are we bringing something up that God delivered me out of? My God up in here, because I feel pain. I see it. I see it. And God's saying, don't worry. I have a plan for the conversation that they bring up every year. Oh, my God. The, someone say the anointing. the anointing. 
As we look at this G status and understand what grace is for young people, we have to understand the anointing too. The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. This stimulates young people from Isaiah 10 and 27. But really, what really blesses me, because God started dealing with me, that Chandler Scotland Bailey, as a young man, as I was leading and as I was following in ministry with my parents, God started reminding me, you're whining about stuff that you want me to move as a young person, but you as a young person, right, Pastor Keith, you're right. You as a young person, you need to receive the anointing to remove the burden and to destroy the yoke. You're complaining about something that the Holy Spirit in your life is designed to help you remove and destroy. Isaiah 10 and 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall take away from off thy shoulder, his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. This ING thing, this, this, this current, I know you feel condemned. I know you made mistakes, young person. I know you, you smoke sometimes. I know you, have, you lie sometimes. I know, I know things in society and the music is brainwashing you. But God said, I have some anointing for you. My God, there's a bomb in Gilead. I have some anointing for you today in Evangel. I have a youth pastor who will pray for you. I got some youth workers who will lay hands on you. Someone say the anointing. The anointing. The anointing helps young people realize, oh, God is for real. The anointing makes young people, and actually the truth is, the climate of our society, we need some anointed vessels. We need some anointed people. We need you to know the Bible and do the Bible. We need you to talk about the power and release the power. I, 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 shout out to all the grandmothers who pray for their grandchildren right now. Shout out to all the mamas and intercessors and prayer warriors. Shout out to all the people who pray for you when you didn't know how to pray for yourself. Shout out to... Lord. Come on, can y'all thank God for the intercessors? You don't know what they got to do to do what you need to. Lord, hallelujah. Isaiah 10 and 27, New Living Translation for the easy air. In that day, the Lord will end the bondage of his people. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulders. These people are going to have something lifted. This generation is going to have something lifted off of them. Why? Because the Lord did it. This G status that's about to hit your seed, the, the, this gift that God's about to start brewing and, 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 and building and, and cooking in your young person. These, I, there, this, this not, you didn't do it. You prayed for it. God said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Listen, this, this, the Lord said, I'm going to copyright this in the blood of the Lamb. I, this is about my glory. This is about my name. God said, I'm going to take care of what needs to take care so that all will see that I'm involved in the name of Jesus. So the anointing is not for nothing. The anointing is for the annoying things found in life. Someone say G status. The, anoint, the anointing is for the annoying things found in life in life. And I want to challenge your perspective today that you can be anointed, young person. And anybody here, any vessels in here, you are anointed. You can be anointed, but you have to not be frustrated with burdens and yokes anymore, though. Because the anointing is for removing burdens and destroying yokes. Oh, I'm sorry. You're anointing. Not just the pastor's anointing, the elder's anointing. And it's, yes, you're anointing to look at a pack of cigarettes and say the blood of Jesus. You're anointing to look at temptation when it tries to call you and say, I'm not answering this year. You're anointing. I need every young person, I hear you, Holy Ghost, every young person, take out your phone, look at your phone, and say, I'm anointed this year. <laughs> you don't want to do it. You ain't going to be obedient. Fine. Lord, haunt them later on tonight. <laughs> You're anointed. But the only way to be anointed as a young person, the only way to be anointed in life, we have to learn how to thank God for the thorns. We have to learn to thank God for the thorns. Thank God for the thorns. These thorns in my life represent I may have ventured off where I should have not gone, but I thank God for what I learned because I learned his statutes. Psalms 119.71 says, it was good for me to be afflicted 
so that I might learn your decrees. My suffering was good for me. It wasn't good for my mama. It wasn't good for your spouse. It wasn't good for the coworkers. It wasn't good for the team members. It was good for you. It taught you to pay attention to the Lord's decrees. So what happened was when young people go through consequences, someone say consequences. You learn to depend on God and you learn to receive the grace of God. I told you, young people, see, you, you, you think the, the grace of God is not to just, like, hide you away like your Metal Gear Solid or uh, whatever movie or TV shows you like to watch or a superhero. It's not to make you be like Quicksilver and dodge your mama as the belt tries to... <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm having fun. But my point is, the, we, a lot of times we think the grace of God is to help us duck and dodge life. No, 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 no. The grace of God helps you go through life. It helps you go through burdens, remove yokes. It's like, and, and you're not ducking or dodging life anymore. You're facing life like, I, this, is, this looks scary, but I know there's an army behind me. There's a grace. Oh, and there's, there's new mercy. So even yesterday, if I felt like I abused the mercy, there's some new, new mercy. New mercy. So sometimes it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, but I'm thankful for the grace, for the God of my grace. I'm thankful for God in my life. Have you ever prayed? Come on. And, all right, let's look at your neighbor left and right right now. Say, I'm going to keep it real this morning. <laughs> this is the participation needed back. Here we go. Have you ever prayed to God to get rid of something? Raise your hand. Have you ever prayed to God? Have you ever prayed this type of prayer? Get them, God. <laughs> get them. You ever pray to get them God prayer? Have you ever prayed to get out of a situation, young people? Come on. Have you ever prayed to get out of a situation? Have you ever prayed to get out of a situation? Have you ever been in a situation for a long time and you've been wondering where the Lord was? Come on. Like, come on, God, where are you at? Where are you? But Paul writes about his thorns in 2 Corinthians 12 and 8. And I'm reading the New Living Trades. It says, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. I don't know what your it is. We want it to go away, but this is what the Lord's saying. Each time he said, my, each time, not one time, thank you Holy Spirit for revealing that. Each time he said, my grace, my grace is all you need. Not one time. He said, I'm not going to ignore you even though you're going to repeat yourself. Even though you're going to be annoyed by life and be bothered by cares, God said, I'm not going to ignore you. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. Check this out. My power works best in weaknesses. Well, God, I don't feel like you can use me. I'm not strong enough. Shh. My power works best. My power works best when you are sobbing and crying and repenting and saying, God, help me, Lord. I'm, I'm going through and I don't know what's going on with my flesh and I'm a young person and I'm trying to be pure. God said, right there, right there. That's when you're strong. My God. That's when you're strong. That's when you're strong. That's what you saw. So, that, so why, why though? So the power of Christ can work through you, young person, through me. That's why I take pleasure now in my weakness. Someone say different perspective. And in the insults and hardships and persecutions, potentially Paul could have been writing that people are actually talking about me because whatever's going on with my carnality, it may not even been behavior, but whatever thorn, it was seen with the natural eye. So people were insulting him as an apostle. They said, yeah, you're a man of God, but what's going on with that area of your life? I don't know what era of your life that everybody keeps looking at, but God said you're about to take pleasure in it. You're about to take pleasure in the insults, the hardships, the persecutions, and the troubles. Why? Because you're going to suffer for Jesus this time. This is not about your pride. It's about to be about his glory. Someone say G status. It's about to be for his glory. And guess what? When you're weak, that's when you're going to be strong in the name of Jesus. So in order to be thankful for the thorns, you have to understand that the anointing is for the thickets. There's a scripture that says, he anoints my head with oil. What really blessed me when David write, wrote, a lot of times, young people, if you ever want to get to know uh, the God of your youth, read Psalms. Because David is not coming from a perspective of just being a king. He's writing as a man, reminiscing of what it was like to be, with a, be a little boy. 
He, he said, I walk with God. I, I know you see me in this, this robe. I know you see me with this authority, but I, I'm a king who walked with God. I, I, I'm not too prideful with my chariots that I don't remember the God of my slingshot here. So God said, so if you want to get to know God, you do it. So he, said, he says, you anoint my head with oil. Now, history shows everyone that the oil on a sheep's head was strategic. Someone say strategic. And so the oil, sheep would sometimes venture off. Sheep would sometimes venture off. Sorry, teenagers would sometimes venture off. Wait, young people, people will sometimes venture off. <laughs> wait, wait, we talking about sheep, right? Wait, are we talking about us? We will sometimes venture off. But, but the anointing would kick in when you hit the thickets. It wasn't for when you had a sound mind. The anointing was for when you were about to lose your mind. My God, I told you if you have a prayer life, you can get with me. So there's been times, oh, my God, some of you in here, if it wasn't for your prayer life, you would have responded to your cuss life. But God's anointing, the pain of that frustration kicks you into prayer. And instead of saying, hey, look, you said, God, help me right now. I need you. <laughs> so the sheep. The sheep's head would be anointed with oil for the season of venturing off. That's why we have to lay hands on our children before they go to school. Because venturing off is going to happen. Peer pressure is going to happen. So you, let, you don't lay hands on your child just when they're doing bad. You lay hands on your child because they're predestined. Uh-uh, in the name of Jesus, when that thing comes, that oil that I put on your head is going to help you slip out of that relationship. You can date him as long as you want, but too late, I already prayed on you while you were asleep. That boy going to break up with you for no reason. You're going to have no idea. It's the oil on your... Woo, your phone broke. You complain that, Mama, give me a new phone. What happened was the oil made your phone freeze up. I'm playing, but this stuff is serious. My mama revealed to me that when I was a teenage boy growing up in the house, she would pray for me, and she would put scriptures in my socks. And she'll put, you know, you know, back in the day, y'all ain't ready for this. All the DMX fans and Ja Rule and all the, hey, day, hey, day, hey day. That's, that's the age I come from, right? So we used to, you remember you used to cuff one short sometimes? Or you used to cuff your jeans? Well, 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 I didn't know, I did not know what was in the cuff. What was in the cuff, my mama would put scriptures declaring the goodness of God. So when I used to venture off or backslide or try to fit in, even though I thought I was fitting in, the scripture was in my, the word was, <laughs> I am a living epistle that when parents battle for their seed, it's going to work out. I promise you it is. You might be laboring. It might be tough. You might be crying. You might be hurt. But God said, I'm going to remember every word that you pray for that young person. Someone say the anointing. the anointing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I'm going to drop down to verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So God comforts us. But the problem with the comforting is it's not going to be on an island. Psalms 23 and 5 says that this celebration point in your Christianity is going to happen in the presence of my enemies. Now, we saw the scripture earlier about persecution, ridicule, and all these other things, and Paul was writing about it. Then all of a sudden, David's writing about it. All these different people are always talking about the, in the presence of critics, in the presence of haters, in the presence of burdens, in the presence of yokes. So it sounds like me, all the anointed people in the scripture got used to craziness around them. And God told me to speak this into this atmosphere. Until you're no longer moved by crazy, and realize crazy got on Ticketmaster to pay for your deliverance, and they got a seat to your breakthrough. Don't be moved by what they're saying. The curtain's going to be revealed. And when God brings you out, I said when God brings you out, when God gives you the mind of Christ and you figure that thing out, all those people who were hired by Satan in your life that keep chastising you and bothering you and frustrating you. And God said, they will see that my hand is upon you. 
So I know it's annoying, but you're anointed. I know it's frustrating, but you're in faith. I know it takes long, but you're stronger. I know it hurts, but the memory helps. Someone scream, thank God for my thorns. Thank God for my thorns. When I think about this G status, the God of my grace, I realize his determination outwitted my decisions. Like, I made decisions that detoured my life, but his determination kept leading me towards destiny. <laughs> we make decisions as humans, but God's theology. Someone say God's theology. God's theology. I know it sounds funny saying this. God's knowledge of himself, not your knowledge of him. His knowledge of himself says, hold up. I was already determined. I'm already determined to see you through this thing. I'm already determined to figure it out. So what does outwit mean? It means to get, to get the better of this really blesses me. By superior ingenuity or cleverness, it means to outsmart. The only way that, the only way God can outsmart your enemy, the only way God can outsmart, outsmart the devil is if there's people in your life and demons in your life that actually think they're smart. He said outsmart. He didn't say smarter. Outsmart. That means there's going to be some things in your life that might seem strategically against you. And you're going to wonder how can you get through this and get out of this because your enemy, it looks like, someone say it looks like, it has a better IQ than you. But God said you're about to tap into something called the anointing and it's about to help you outsmart, outwit the situations and the cares of life. You have to allow your enemy and sometimes even allow the devil to think he got it figured out. Oh, oh, you got, oh, you got Chandler figured out? Okay, we're going to put scriptures inside his, um, while he in high school, we're going to put scriptures inside his genes. We're going to outsmart the devil. Because God's foreknowledge knew that I would mention that same testimony this very day. Without even knowing I would mention it. And now the devil's reminded about the season of my backslide that God's now using for my front slide. And now Satan's like, really? you going to outsmart me, Jesus? And God said, that's exactly what I did. I outwitted all y'all. <laughs> I can't help but think about how confusingly awesome the grace of God is in my life, in our lives. Ephesians 3 and 18 says this. This really blesses me. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide someone shout wide. How long someone shout long. How high someone shout high. How deep. Someone shout deep. Amen. When I think about the death of God's love, those are those situations where you literally feel like you're under life. Like, like, like you're drowning in that race relationship. You're drowning in that broken heart. You're hurting in that situation. That's that situation where, where you feel like the devil is holding your head down. And there's no lifeguard around to help you get out of it. But God said, oh, don't worry. You will outwit this. You will outwit this. When you write that book about what you've been through, you will outwit it. We got to have some more gritty Christians who are willing to go through some things in life. Because spoils are always in line with battles. And you have to go through some blood, sweat, and tears to reap the spoils. So sometimes we need to stop complaining and start praying that the Holy Spirit will help us go through some things even though we feel submerged or under. So why? Sometimes I have to build bridges in our life. Long, the grace for the distance. High, that you can climb higher when things try to pull you down. Deep, there's some deep issues. But God knew the end from the beginning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Slow down. God knew the end from the beginning. Then foreknew your decisions of compromise. That would, that would attempt to forfeit what he did from the beginning. So he made sure he established a definite ending from beginning so that his love and grace would be unstoppable should your mistakes or compromise have a defining ending. Let me say it again. And we're going to have fun with this. It's, it's youth day. Someone say it's youth day. We're going to have fun. God knew the end from the beginning, then foreknew your decisions of compromise that would attempt to forfeit what he did from the beginning. So he made sure he established a definite ending from the beginning so that his love and grace would be unstoppable should your mistakes compromise his definite ending. When you show up and people are like, didn't you used to? They don't, it doesn't look like you've been through your past. 
but yet they know your past, but you don't look like your past. You look like your future, but you don't feel like your future because you're doubting in your present. But God's grace surpassed all circumstances in your life, took you to another level. Someone shout hallelujah. I have the privilege of knowing this man of God right here. And what blesses me so much, I've been asking the Lord, when will I feel comfortable in this anointing? He said, you will never feel comfortable in it because it's for my comfort, not yours. Until you realize that all the potential and all the purpose that's locked in you is not for you, it's for God's people. You will finally get to a place in life where you're willing to do it and feel doubtful and feel weird and feel uh, unordinary. I'm making up words. You'll feel confused. You'll feel like, do I fit in? Do I, can I rock with them? But God said, you don't, you don't have to rock with them. You're about to rock with it. You're about to take this slingshot even though your brothers bullied you and they doubted you and they questioned, why are you at the battlefield? But God said, it's not about you being at the battlefield. It's about me being with you in the battlefield. Some things are just about his glory. Somebody shout. G status. It's not about you. And if you feel comfortable in it, it is about you. God will allow you to tailor it so that it can fit your cause and fit your purpose and fit society and fit your generation, but it'll never fit you. It'll never fit you. Not if you're a true disciple. It'll never fit you because God will use your pain points, your awkwardness, your weirdness, your testimony, your past, your privilege, your hurt, your help to be for his glory. Someone say, work it in, God. I just feel like there's somebody here. You just come on. Those who do, you know this applies, just start giving God praise right where you're at right now. Just start worshiping God right now where you're at. This is a God moment. God's opening your mind and you're perceiving something right now. Just take a moment. We'll just take a moment and let Jesus speak to you real quick. Woo. You're never going to feel comfortable. I'm going to say this real quick. Outwit. That's what it means. To deceive or defeat by greater ingenuity. I know you did not know what God would do with your life, Chandler Bailey, before you were a pastor when you got kicked off the football team in high school. But you will learn the God who will help you walk on at a college that was supposed to give you a scholarship. And you'll beat everybody else in special teams. And they only give you a partial scholarship. And you'll feel insignificant because all the guys in the locker room are on full rise. And you're starting with like only partial. But not knowing that the will of God is strategic in your life. And by the time you're on full ride, they'll be forced to pay for your grad school. Someone say the pain was strategic. I made up a word with my youth called stratical. <laughs> it's when God uses his strategy to be tactical in your life. He mixes both together. And if your mind is not blown by what God's doing in your life, it's, potential, it's potentially the fact, it's, it's, potential, it's potentially that you're not realizing what God is doing in your life. Romans 8 and 30. And those he predestined, past tense, he also called past tense. Those he called, past tense, he also justified. Past tense, those he, can we put the scripture up? They got to see it. Romans 8 and 30, those he predestined, he also called. Sorry, I added this this morning. Yep, you're right. God gave it to me. Romans 8 and 30, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. All of his past tense. You telling me every step I take of obedience is actually already done in Jesus? You're, you're telling me that, like, every time I listen to my mama when, and honor thy father and mother, I'm, you're telling me that everything I walk in is truly already finished? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it sit on you. Everything? Everything was already prepared for me. Wait. Prepared past tense in the presence of my enemies. So by the time I get there, as, a, as, a, as, a, as any young people questioning their destiny and questioning their purpose, you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now. God's saying that I have arenas in your life 
that have a certain amount of seats. And I have hired people in your life that you think are annoying you, but truly they bought a ticket to your breakthrough. They're waiting in their seats for your steps of obedience to lead you into the auditorium where you could be in their presence and they could be looked at as your enemy. You got to catch what I'm saying. God outsmarted my brokenness. God was too clever even though I was too stupid. My decisions led to my detours, but God's determination led to my destiny. Everyone standing, please.